the day we launched our website that next month we were already at a 5.5x revenue it has helped us build a community and also a very loyal set of customers i would definitely say it's got a lot better for me since i've had uh, like in my investors on board aman and piyush you can't keep spending money to acquire new people every time in the initial years of your career is the best time to try things out life only gets harder nothing else matters except your own faith and belief welcome आज का एपिसोड काफ़ी डिफरेंट है बिकॉज आज हमने अपने स्टूडियो में नहीं बल्कि हाउस ऑफ चिकनकारी के ऑफिस में शूट किया है इन दिस पॉडकास्ट आई एम टॉकिंग टू आकृति रावल हु इज़ द फाउंडर ऑफ हाउस ऑफ चिकनकारी हु अपीयर ऑन शार्क टैंक इंडिया सीजन टू तो इस एपिसोड में मैंने आकृति से वो सारे सवाल पूछे कि अगर आपको एक ब्रांड स्टार्ट करना है एक डी टू सी ब्रांड स्टार्ट करना है तो आपकी हेल्प हो सके थिंग्स लाइक मार्केटिंग ऑन इंस्टाग्राम बिल्डिंग अ लॉयल कम्युनिटी ऑफ कस्टमर्स बिल्डिंग एन ऑनलाइन ओनली ब्रांड और ऐसे कई सारे सवाल जिनसे कि आपकी काफी हेल्प हो सकती है एक पेन पेपर लेके बैठ जाओ लर्निंग्स नोट डाउन कर लो बिकॉज ये वीडियो काफी फायदेमंद होने वाली है बिफोर यू बिगिन आई एम ऑन मिशन टू एट हंड्रेड के सब्सक्राइबर्स ऑन दिस चैनल इन द नेक्स्ट सिक्स मंथ्स एंड उसके लिए मुझे आप सबकी हेल्प चाहिए इवन टूडे नाइनटी वन परसेंट ऑफ यू वॉचिंग माई वीडियोज आर नॉट सब्सक्राइब गाइज इफ यू हैव एवर एंजॉयड एनी ऑफ माई वीडियोज लर्न समथिंग फ्रॉम दैम प्लीज हिट दैट सब्सक्राइब बटन इट हेल्प मी मैसेवली Thank you. So, without wasting any time, I am Sanskar, and you're watching the Game Plan. So, you are an online-only brand, and when you started, what helped you get that traction and visibility on your website? When we started, uh, we didn't have a website. We only had our Instagram, okay. right? So, Instagram helped us get mm-hmm. build that community. Right. And before we had our website, only on Instagram and WhatsApp, we were doing about like five lakhs of revenue. Mm-hmm. but our community was big mm-hmm. and because instagram and whatsapp is so manual right. you know i got so tired of taking the orders manually that we decided to build a website and okay. uh, the day we launched our website that next month we were already at a 5.5x revenue okay. and that told us and that gave us the confidence that community was already there mm-hmm. we were a little late right. in launching the website right. so i think uh, 100% i think it's the initial focus on instagram mm-hmm. Uh, as a platform to build content and get the brand story out that helped us and obviously uske baad like we've taken a lot of decisions in paid ads and all those things but initial i think traction only came from instagram as a platform correct in india there's a lot of craft people think ki we can go to this local place like surat or lucknow in your case and make that craft available all across india but very few people actually go ahead and do that so yeah. आपका क्या रीजन था कि यू एक्चुअली ठहर कि हाँ इसमें आप एक बिजनेस स्टार्ट कर सकते हो आई थिंक दो चीज़ें थी दैट वो रियली इंपॉर्टेंट टू मी आई थिंक इन द आइडिया दैट आई वाज फाइंडिंग नंबर वन वाज ऑलवेज दैट इट शुड बी समथिंग जो मैं बहुत सारे लोगों को पहुंचा पाऊँ और कहीं भी पहुँचा पाऊँ लाइक नॉट बहुत कम लोगों को तो एक चीज़ वो थी समथिंग दैट आई फील has probably a scale of reaching a lot of people right so agar aap shark tank koi bhi dekhta hai ya dekhoge to jisme wo market size bolta hai right so uh, at that time when i started mujhe nahi pata tha market size kya hota hai but i used to always think ki main kitne sare logo ko kaise pahunchaun right so that is the definition of market size and the second thing was that i wanted what i do to have a purpose like it should be solving a a problem a real problem and i thought that Uh, through what we do, we're really like solving a lot of problems for the artisans. Yeah. We're uplifting them, and eventually, as we grow, you know, we really grow the craft. We grow the artisans. Yeah. So th- I thought that the purpose was also very strong. Yeah. So that gave me a lot of confidence that you know, if the purpose is so strong, I'm sure I can do something. Because yeah. without purpose, it's very difficult to yeah. for the customers to understand the brand or build a brand. Yeah. So those two things really, I think, hit me that. मतलब हाँ आई कैन यू नो ट्राई इट आउट वेन वी स्टार्टेड वी डेंट नो वट कैन हैपन और बोथ माई मॉम एंड आई हमारी कुछ ज़्यादा एक्सपेक्टेशन नहीं थी वी जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू डू एज मच टू यू नो सस्टेन द बिजनेस लाइक वी नेवर थॉट वे गो डू दीज नंबर्स और वी गो गो टू शार्क टैंक देर वर ओनली टू थिंग्स दैट हुए इज गेटिंग अटैच टू अस इन द बिजनेस आर टीम वी आर एबल टू टेक केयर ऑफ दैम एंड यू नो कंटिन्यूसली ग्रो दैम इन लाइफ लाइक फाइनेंशियली पर्सनली सो यू आर बूट स्ट्रैप्ड अप एंड टिल अ पॉइंट तो तब तक हाउ आर यू मैनेजिंग थिंग्स हाउ आर यू स्केलिंग 
so uh, we were bootstrapped till before shark tank and we've taken about 75 lakhs of investment from shark tank for 3.75% so pehle uh, to my mom and i started from 3 lakhs and uh, when we had initially started in covid october 2020 and from those 3 lakhs we built only an instagram and whatsapp business we didn't build a website so we kept our expenses really low we really focused on community on instagram because that was the best way for us to like mm-hmm. not spend on marketing and yet like get some sales mm-hmm. so hamara jo customer acquisition cost tha bahut kam tha one year so we were profitable since day one because there was hardly any customer mm-hmm. acquisition cost sara hamara jo content tha wo instagram pe i was shooting mm-hmm. putting free videos i was trying that you know one video goes viral and the brand reaches people mm-hmm. so first one year uh, marketing costs were almost nil so that helped us uh, gain you know a lot of uh, like initial interest from the customers mm-hmm. when uh, we built our website when we started spending a lot more on marketing is when obviously uh, we required some capital mm-hmm. and by that time we had reached about 25 30 lakhs a month in sales mm-hmm. so then my dad had a little confidence that okay mm-hmm. you know you guys have managed yes. to do this and uh, willingly like he offered to help mm-hmm. we were going to go outside for uh additional like you know a uh, funding mm-hmm. and when i had this conversation with him so he said that you know for now like another year if you want i can support you right. because we know that this is something big we can build something mm-hmm. big you have the confidence you've seen certain numbers mm-hmm. so then he pitched in and uh, he gave us like some working capital to run the business and then shark tank happened honestly mm-hmm. we had not planned for shark tank but uh, when it happened and how it happened everything was like you know obviously a destiny for us mm-hmm. so with the help of my dad's capital mm-hmm. we kind of managed another year and a half and even now like you know with shark tank investment and my dad's investment we are mm-hmm. kind of rotating that money in mm-hmm. the business jab hum college mein hote hain na almost 90% of us feel ki we can start a t-shirt business yeah, yeah. Uh, i know ki it's very different from your but similar yeah. ek domain mein aata hai तो हाउ डू यू सजेस्ट लाइक व्हाट्स द इनिशियल कैपिटल लोएस्ट रिक्वायर्ड फॉर समवन टू स्टार्ट देयर बिजनेस एंड हाउ कैन दे स्ट्रेटेजाइज आई डोंट थिंक यू नीड लाइक ऑनेस्टली वी स्टार्टेड विद 3 लाख्स राइट सो आई हैव दैट बेंचमार्क बट यू कैन स्टार्ट विद लेसर आल्सो if you go to a drop shipping model mm-hmm. because it's if you see certain mm-hmm. drop shipping so i when i was finding my business idea uh, before chicken curry for 6 months drop shipping is what i wanted to do because mm-hmm. i did not want to take money from anyone and i thought whatever savings i have from my job i'm going to start with that and once it's successful then i'll ask people like you know my family friends investors whoever mm-hmm. so i was only watching drop shipping videos mm-hmm. and that really helped me when i started this business because even though it was not drop shipping all the learnings about digital ads or digital websites or shopify or facebook ads i learned from there i've learned from youtube mm-hmm. right because it's free knowledge so i have this book of notes i used to make every day okay this is how you run facebook ads and for the first one and a half years i've done it myself so i think thinking about a business where you can kind of have a drop shipping model where you don't have to keep inventory but whatever minimal resources you have you can spend because inventory is expensive yeah right? for that you need working capital even when we grew when my dad pitched in working capital was needed for inventory right if i want to scale i need to have those goods so the right way is to think about a drop shipping model wherein like you can not spend on the inventory but spend on say the right things like content shooting or like if you want a website so like shopify website uh, like you know maybe a shoot because you need to get your product but aajkal to usme bhi ai aa gaya right like a lot of people are not spending on shoots anymore they're doing ai using ai to cut the cost of shoots so there's a lot of ways you can save money uh, facebook and google honestly come much later if the first thing is understanding who is your target audience which platform are they using and if you're starting a clothing business obviously instagram becomes a very important platform for you for any clothing business because i think uh, for clothing instagram is one way one place where you can build a community so kaise aap wo community bana sakte ho apne brand ke around kaise aap content apna dikha sakte ho instagram is free like you know it's free you just have to post content consistently and you have to be very very like uh, i think uh, consistent and uh, i think uh, positive about it you can't get negative right. agar aapki ek post pe nahi like aayi nahi reach aayi so you have to have that mindset ki mujhe roz karna hai 
and you know that one day will come when that one video one post goes viral you wait for that because mm-hmm. then that will give you that confidence you need mm-hmm. but i don't think you need a lot of money to begin with but yes once you reach a certain scale you do need money mm-hmm. to scale even more right. otherwise a lot of people can also start businesses who do not like uh, to not to have a stable income mm-hmm. right you don't always have to raise you don't right. always have to grow right. if you are happy with the scale you're at and you want a consistent stable income you keep it like that mm-hmm. so it's what you want if you really have the passion to see growth in your business and you want to do newer things for your mm-hmm. business then you go seek external capital from whoever right, right? so yeah that's my long advice on <laughs> So now let's move on to our Ask the Founder segment. At the rate once underscore Dhal wants to know, how can they build a brand that attracts international customers? I think you have to firstly think about whether your product is uh, like catering to an NRI audience, like in our case, or whether it's catering to a global audience, right? A lot of brands which are doing Western wear can cater to a larger global audience. Then you have to think about things: where are they shopping from? Uh, what prices are they shopping from what are the competitors who are shipping worldwide or available worldwide how are they priced how will you be priced so i think the primary foundation is that you have to think of them as a separate business and uh, audience altogether the things that you do for your indian audience will not work for your global audience whether they're nris or like you know not nris because uh, they're born and raised in a different culture they're born and raised in a different uh, country uh, their trust on online payments is a lot stronger mm. uh, their p- purchasing power is a lot stronger but then also probably their quality standards may be different higher or lower right depends like i'm not mm. saying that it's higher or lower like the expectations of the quality may be different mm. different and more than uh, by quality i don't just mean the quality of the product but the quality of the service right. how fast you're shipping what is your return and exchange policy right you know quality of the experience in general mm. so you have to think about all these things and formulate a separate strategy at neetu 3902 says what is a good inventory that she can have initially like how much should she spend in a clothing business yeah yeah as little as you can <laughs> so uh, that is not an investment like i would recommend to anyone uh, without having proof of concept without knowing that Uh, this is the product that people want mm-hmm. i can if i scale if i can sell to 100 tomorrow i can sell to 200 right so i would uh, really suggest to look at alternative ways to bring down the inventory cost uh, you look at drop shipping models or you you know tie up with a manufacturer who can like maybe yeah i mean that's drop shipping only but in the sense that maybe you procure the fabric but you know it can be a made to order thing initially mm-hmm. and eventually you get into right. like having the stock in place like figure out some uh, loopholes around it do some research but i mean clothing the a lot of investment goes in inventory and right. you wouldn't want to get it wrong you wouldn't want to have the inventory and right. th- then not being able to sell it right. so yeah that's something really important to think about at samarth_1127 wants to know how do you compete with other bigger brands we don't compete <laughs> we really don't compete i mean i've never thought of anyone as a competition mm, okay. i've always either thought of them as an inspiration mm. this is where i want to be mm. this is what i want to do if they're bigger than me mm. and even actually smaller brands some of them have insane marketing right so i've always looked up to right. even the small brands as you know they're doing this really well in their social on their social media mm. so i don't think i'm um, like thinking on those lines at all right. and it's something personal i don't i i think you should just concentrate on your own journey mm. and we're consistently get becoming a better version of ourselves like you know what the brand was one year back right. we want to grow from that right. we don't care where if xyz is taking mm. our market share or we are taking xyz's mm. market share right. we care about becoming you know the best versions of ourselves and that is what like everyone in the team is aligned with right at this is aman 01 says how to build a brand that customers keep coming back to uh, i think for this the most important thing is experience and mm-hmm. experience includes everything mm-hmm. it includes pre purchase purchase post purchase mm-hmm. you know you have to think of all aspects and not from day one mm-hmm. will you be able to give them the best experience mm-hmm. that can be comparable to an amazon but i think the eventual goal 
इज टू रीच देर राइट यू नॉट गोन बी देर ऑन डे वन कि आप उनको रिटर्न एक्सचेंजेस भी रिफंड भी तुरंत दे दोगे लाइक यू नो योर ऑर्डर विल ऑल्सो रीच इन वन डे सो आई थिंक इट्स ऑल अ स्टेप बाई स्टेप प्रोसेस बट या द माइंड सेट शुड बी दैट दैट इवेंचुअली आई वॉन्ट माई कस्टमर्स टू बी सो हैप्पी दैट यू नो दे कम बैक बिकॉज इवन दो देर आर टेन अदर चिकनकारी ब्रांड्स और फिफ्टीन अदर इंडियन वे ब्रांड्स दिस ब्रांड understands me right so that's what our aim is mm-hmm. and we've tried to improve slowly slowly every day and i think that really helps you see it and you don't see it from this month to the next you see it over a period of 3 4 5 6 months right. that the retention goes up and that's yeah i mean that's what it is and it you you get to you get to see it in your numbers mm-hmm. right but from my end how does your day look like on an everyday basis <laughs> i think uh r- now uh it's a, it come to a point where there are just a lot of meetings i think earlier i was at a point where i would come but i would have like two things but i was doing those two things like for four four hours or five five hours to wo do hi cheeze ho rahi hai panch panch ghante ke liye kyunki wo mujhe khud karna tha now obviously like i'm very privileged to have an amazing team so it's come to a point where the team is taken a lot of like workload of operations and uh, things from me but it involves a lot of constant meetings with every different team constant like uh, evaluating that what next what right. yeah what now what did we do wrong what did we do better right. so i think yeah right now it's probably entering the office and having like eight hours of straight meetings <laughs> where i'm having my lunch also in a yeah. meeting and then yeah eight to nine hours of meetings is what my day looks like now so what is one bad what the thing you hate the most about being a founder to be an entrepreneur and to be a founder uh, it is very lonely sometimes mm. i think that is something that is very under it's rated in the sense that everyone just thinks that you have a team you know you have everyone mm. and what's the problem but i think there are so many decisions that as a founder you're supposed to take alone mm. even though my mom is my co-founder mm. uh but we both are very distinct in our roles we handle very different things right she is more operations and production i am taking care of the business growth finance marketing side of things so there are still a lot of decisions that you know fell on me to take it alone and to take the pressure of it going right or wrong on me and right. not having that person like you know when your kids you have your parents you like main ye karu ki main ye karu you have your friends you have everyone but when you are a founder you have everyone but still it's lonely so yeah that is i think sometimes too much uh, and it, this has nothing to do with anyone around me you know they're all there to support Correct. me my family is there my friends are there my team is there mm. but it's just an internal feeling so you you have to kind of learn to live with it mm. but i would definitely say it's got a lot better for me since i've had uh, like in my investors on board aman and piyush and their teams because if i ever get stuck like that i always have someone to like call or drop a message and right. take that advice right. that you know i'm like it may be the stupidest doubt mm-hmm. but like you know to be able to have that someone mm-hmm. i think having mentors that's why it's really important because it makes you feel less lonely in that journey you mentioned about aman and piyush being on board what discussions you have had with them and how have they helped you to scale even further yeah. uh, i've had a couple of meetings with them and their teams are in constant touch with me mm-hmm. and we had i think discussions about everything in the business right there are things that probably are my forte which i've been told to amplify and use which they've realized are the business's forte or my forte there are things which i was probably not the best at but they've given me direction the teams that this is how you need to think you know get someone on board who can help you with this you don't have to do everything yourself maybe just fill in that position with a person who knows it so they've guided me a lot i think it's a very uh, detailed discussion about every aspect of the business every aspect of me as an entrepreneur what i should be focusing on how my day should actually look like like when i was spending i told you like 5 hours 5 hours doing two things this is something that came from them that you should not be doing this like please please get more people in the team and you need to be working on the growth continuously right so i've heard this from them so many times i've implemented it and it's taken time it's taken 6 7 months but finally like i feel i'm somewhat there mm-hmm. still like you know mm-hmm. there are days when i have meetings planned and ek meeting meri 5 ghante chal jati hai ki sab baki cancel ho jati hai so things like that you know they help you understand what is required uh, to scale 
and uh, how to they understand a lot of things better because of their experience so you know uh, all the mistakes they made they'll give you examples that you know we believe that this is the better thing to do mm-hmm. and honestly you have to trust them because they've done it mm-hmm. they've done it they've grown from there mm-hmm. and when challenges come up and i get scared and if i've been scared mm-hmm. i've asked them that you know am i doing the right mm-hmm. thing and just to hear that mm-hmm. you know don't worry okay. like this is a part of mm-hmm. everyone's journey when they're scaling up like certain things like that even if it's just like one word or one line make you calm up because you're like okay i'm not alone like you know everyone goes through this so things like that and i think it's really important to have the right mentors in place and we've grown with them and i'm sure we'll continuously like grow with them how do you delegate because personally i struggle with it i have yeah, yeah. a controlling thing inside me yeah. i don't like to delegate tasks so how do you manage that I think that's the biggest challenge of being an entrepreneur or being right. like self employed or having your own right. thing right. uh because it doesn't come easy especially right. when you've built something yourself you've done everything yourself right. so when people are doing it obviously you know you have your creativity or your inputs will come in and you will want to control everything but I think that is something that uh, should be aced and has to be realized that you have to ace this right. because there is no growth without delegating right. there is no growth without uh like having a team doing mm-hmm. what you are doing or you were doing right so uh yeah i think i did struggle i do struggle mm-hmm. but uh, then a lot of things i you know make myself believe or tell the team that uh, don't even tell me mm-hmm. i tell them don't even tell me because you need to stop getting in the habit of telling me or taking my approval for everything mm-hmm. certain things just do it mm-hmm. right and tell me and if something happens right or something wrong happens or some, like we feel we made a mistake it's okay yeah. you learn from it yeah. and next time you won't do it yeah. but at least it will be delegated from me to you so don't ask yeah. so a lot of the teams i've told where i feel it's possible that don't yeah. a lot of the delegation i've passed it on like i've got someone on board for follow ups only right. where my daily time doesn't go but yeah. the follow ups i want to take i've got someone on board to so that the team also stays like you know uh, they feel that they have someone for their problems i may not be available 100% for everyone at all times right. so th- at least that person can help mm-hmm. you know listen to their problems guide them for solutions so that also helps mm-hmm. right like bahut sari cheeze daily routine ki aap delegate kar sakte ho kai cheeze kyunki aapko abhi khud bhi karni padengi so but it's important like uske bina nahi ho sakta kuch i think it is the most important mm-hmm. skill to learn okay. for anyone So on Shark Tank, you shared that you hit approximately two CR monthly sales in the third year of operations. Yeah. So, what role do you think social media played in that? So, uh, I think the biggest role social media has played for us is uh, I can't put it put it in a monetary value or a monetary number. It has helped us build a community and also a very loyal set of customers. Mm-hmm. so the loyal set of customers are coming back again and again to yeah. shop with my brand and that is very important to build a profitable and sustainable yeah. business yeah. because you can't keep spending money to acquire new people every time right you yeah. would want if someone has come to you they come back in the next month they come back the month after eventually the customer buying like if you've spent say 100 rupees to acquire the customer on facebook and google eventually they should come and shop for 900 or 1000 rupees so you know that eventually you've made money mm-hmm. right so i think that's where social media has played a very important role for us building that community mm-hmm. loyal base retention and you see it in your numbers you know mm-hmm. we see that in our retention numbers we see it Uh, when we post something engaging on social media when our shark tank episode aired uh, we had about 170k followers i think mm-hmm. and uh, the day the episode launched and we posted on mm-hmm. our social media some of our customers were so emotional about it that you know we follow you since you had 1000 followers mm-hmm. and it's so good to see you reach here and the comments and the love we got from them made us realize that okay we have something special right here this is not just people mm-hmm. who are seeing us as a brand they shop from they right. are attached to it you know and they are reacting to it they admire it so that is what i think it has given us how do you build that attachment i think it's so uh, in today's time it's authenticity mm-hmm. it's transparency mm-hmm. it's connecting uh, with your audience with the right points you cannot like you know be fake about anything you cannot you have to be real people are very smart customers are very smart today uh, 
I think a real content works more. Hmm. You know, when we put our shoots on social media, we realize that customers do not want to engage. Hmm. So uh, when we, whenever we're posting like behind the scenes in office or like you know real stories from hmm. our workplace, we are getting more engagement because people are connecting hmm. with who are the people behind right. the brand. Like who is packing my order? Who is Uh, stitching my order who is doing the embroidery on my order i think that sort of attachment uh, instagram has given us a great platform to bring that out to our customer and show them the right like you know uh, communication points or show them the right things about the brand but it cannot be fake like i just feel that uh, it is really important to have all the content in place but the primary foundation is it has to be authentic and has to be genuinely authentic like you cannot think ki maine kisi ka ye dekh liya brand par and hum same ab copy kar le ab kar lo wo ek baar chal sakta hai but long term mein customer will realize that so you know what you are as a brand you have to bring it out to your people help them connect to the brand as it like maybe in a sense that the brand is their friend right or there for them and understands them finally akriti can you tell the audience a wonderful piece of advice that will help them to start their entrepreneurial journey uh i think advice so i am too young myself and early in my journey to give anyone an advice so i would always say that i'll share something that i struggled with and i hope that can help someone when they start uh just don't think so much right like just before starting i think if you want to try it out just try it out after college uh, and uh, just before like you know in the initial years of your career is the best time to try things out life only gets harder it never gets easier and i think uh, i i really got the nudge because covid happened mm-hmm. i don't even know if i would be an entrepreneur even though i wanted to always be an entrepreneur if covid didn't happen so covid forced me that i had so much time uh, you know that okay i can sit and reflect and think but mm-hmm. if even if there's no covid you know don't take so long and mm-hmm. if your inner intuition always knows that what you want to do so try it out like don't be scared worst case you will fail and it's okay like you know i before like house of chicken curry yeah. i tried like freelancing with a couple of brands for the social media and to be honest it didn't work out well at all right we were not getting paid like we went out we had three four people who were like uh, i did it with my friends who are clients and like they were not paying us well we thought we'll make a lot more a uh, plus the kind of clients we wanted we were not getting those so uh, it's fine matlab like you know not to think about it in negatively but i thought that taught me a lot about what i actually want to do i after that i realized that no maybe like social media is not what i want to do i used to think i want to do this mm-hmm. so it taught me that that you know no it's not as exciting not in terms of the money like even the work mm-hmm. i just thought that no yaar i need a little more to it like you know I, i i it's not my thing like you know so all those things i learned something from it so everyone fails and there is no harm no matter what anyone says around you be it your family or friends mm-hmm. i think the one thing to remember is that nothing else matters except your own faith and belief mm. that's, that's about it awesome akriti rawal thank you so much for joining us on this podcast sharing your journey and experience with the audience i loved it thank you thank so you much. thank you so much